To find an LDU decomposition of a matrix, we must begin by following these four steps to construct an LU decomposition. Link in the description to my lessons introducing LU decompositions and LDU decompositions in more depth. After you have that LU decomposition, all you have to do is factor L into L prime D, and then we can form our LDU decomposition. To factor L into L prime D, all you have to do is take the diagonal entries of L and put those in their own diagonal matrix. And then each column of L should be divided by its diagonal entry. So for example, this first column would have to get divided by L11. Thus in L prime, we have one, we have L21 divided by L11, and so on. The second column is divided by its diagonal entry, L22, and so on. We're going to find an LDU decomposition of this matrix. First, here are the steps to find the LU decomposition, which I'll revisit in more depth in a minute. But assuming you're comfortable with that, let's just jump to the last step. We construct this LU decomposition of our matrix A, and now we're going to turn that into an LDU decomposition. Like I said, we're going to begin by taking those diagonal entries of L and putting them in their own diagonal matrix. So we're going to have two, nine, and one half. That's the diagonal matrix D. Now all we have to do is divide each column in L by its diagonal entry. We divide the first column by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1, 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 1 divided by 2 is 1 half. We then divide column 2 by its diagonal entry, which is 9, 0 divided by 9 is 0, 9 divided by 9 is 1, and 3 divided by 9 is 1 third. And then in the third column, we divide everything by 1 half. 0 divided by 1 half is 0, and 1 half divided by 1 half is 1. One. And that's the LDU decomposition, easily from the LU decomposition. If you need more details on the LU decomposition, let's quickly go through that. We begin with the matrix A we're trying to decompose, and we perform elementary row operations in order to get it into row echelon form. Once we have it in row echelon form, that is our upper triangular matrix U. Now, each row operation that we perform is going to tell us something that we should put in the lower triangular matrix L, which we're constructing on the right while we do this Gaussian elimination. So the first step I would do here is multiply row one by one half in order to get a leading one in that first row. So then my lower triangular matrix L, I know that it needs to have zeros above the diagonal. And now after performing this row operation of multiplying a row by a scalar, I know one entry of L. Since we had to multiply by one half to introduce a leading one in this position, in that same position of L, we should put the reciprocal of one half, which of course is two. So each time we perform a row operation, it's going to give us an entry to put in L. The next things we would do is subtract four row one from row two in order to turn this four into a zero. We're trying to get zeros below that leading one. And then we would subtract one row one from row three in order to turn that one into a zero. And that gives us two more entries for L. Since we subtracted four copies of row one to introduce a zero in this position, in this position of L, we should put the opposite of negative four, which is positive four. And since we subtracted one copy of row one to introduce a zero in this position, in that same position of L, we should put the opposite of negative one, which is positive one. So note the differences here. If you multiply a row by a scalar, then in L, you'll put the reciprocal of that scalar. And if you subtract a multiple of one row from another, then in L, you'll put the opposite of that scalar multiple that you used. So at first we use the reciprocal of a half, which is two, but then for these two operations, since we were subtracting multiples of one row from another, we used the negative of those scalar multiples. The negative of negative four is positive four, and same thing with negative one. 
Next, we multiply row 2 by 1 ninth in order to introduce a leading 1 in that position. Since it was done to introduce a leading 1 in that position, in the same position of L, we're going to put the reciprocal of 1 ninth, which is 9. Then we're going to subtract 3 copies of row 2 from row 3 in order to introduce a 0 in that position. Thus, we're getting zeros below our leading 1s. Since we introduced a 0 in that position, it's going to be in that same position of L that we'll put the negative of negative 3, which is positive 3. Lastly, we're going to double row 3 so that it has a leading 1. When we do that, we also need to put the reciprocal of 2, which is 1 half, in that corresponding entry of L. So we introduced a leading one there, we multiplied by 2 to do it, so we put the reciprocal of 2, which is 1 half, in that corresponding entry. And we stop here because the matrix is now in row echelon form. This is the matrix U, this is the matrix L, and that's how we form our LU decomposition. Note that in some cases, performing Gaussian elimination will not specify every single entry of L. In those cases, any entry that's left unspecified would be zero. Once you get that LU decomposition, it's a cinch to get the LDU decomposition.